I'm gonna join in. Hang on. No! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, yeah, I did. I had it burst out in like the most photogenic way possible. That I wish I recorded it. It was perfect, actually. Well, this is on stream, so. I can totally see it. <laughs> Alright, someone clip it. In PM, I want you to see what this is. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> so, um, totally unrelated, not, but guess he got an 8 pack of cold ones for their birthday. Nice! Nice. Happy been. birthday. So you're 24? I've been 24 since the 25th of last month. 27th of last month, I mean. Okay. So, yes. Stop. Do you see the picture? Oh, I, I feel like I'm playing for Ultimate <laughs> Custom Night for now. Also, yes, I see it. Do you see what it is? Hold on. I need to make the image for you. Oh, excuse me. What day is it today? Yes. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> Come on, lock on more. Bingo. Oh, the fuck's my calendar? Oh, it's the 2nd of June? Ha. <laughs> I'm gonna be 34 in like 20 days. I'm gonna be. Oh. I'm gonna be 25 and seven. Oh, you're another June, uh, another June baby. June 9th. Nice, dude. Did That's why my favorite number is nine. Did you just unironically say June baby? I'm willing to bet that your second favorite number is six. Oh my god, it makes sense. You fucking bitch. <laughs> Stop reading my goddamn mind. <laughs> I wasn't reading your mind. Six nine ninety eight. Oh my god. God fucking damn it. Listen, man. Listen, dude. Okay, I'm gonna be completely like transparent. Anybody else remember that movie Nine that came out, the animated one about the dog? Yes, I do. Fear is the appropriate response. I lost my fucking shit when that was announced. I screamed at my mom. Mom, there's a movie about made after my favorite number. We need to go see it. <laughs> what did you think of the movie? I thought it was good. Like, I've heard that people said it was like disturbing and shit. The, the okay, so was Tim Burton. What that expect? is. That was definitely the point of Nine, and I do want to say I'm I'm also a fan of Nine because like fucking spoiler. For, how old is this movie? It came, uh, it came out in 2009, so you can do like, the math there. Yeah, yeah, it came out nine nine nine. I remember. Yeah, that. September 9, 2009. <laughs> wait, hold up. Wait, hold on. When did it come out? Nine 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 nine. Fuck yeah. yourself. Fuck yourself! So 13 years ago. So, so for anyone who doesn't want to be spoiled on a 13 year old movie, mute now. But basically, the movie Nine is about dolls who all inherit the soul of some old guy who made them. And there's also a giant spider robot who wants to take those souls, all soul pieces, so it can sustain itself. Sometimes and the whole thing is just depressing and post apocalyptic, and I absolutely love it. Because during a, a great during a war that looks suspiciously like World War One, they needed <laughs> robots to help the fight, and they created an AI. Which the intrinsic thing about every AI is, it's gonna figure out. Like it's like the Reapers in Mass Effect. It's like they realize that hey, we don't need you. It's like but that then the idea. I'm now just mentally hearing. I'm now just mentally hearing. This hurts you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do want to. Literally, World War One Ultron is what they made. Yeah. I do want. I do want to chime in a little bit with that whole AI thing. I've talked about this a bunch of times, so I think a bunch of you already know where I'm going with this. But can we stop with the trope of AI getting smart enough to ask questions? Actually, yeah. Um, the basic whole, message I, is. I just wanna, go ahead. Just want to point out there actually is a movie where there is an advanced AI. Not only does it make intelligent decisions, it never at any point even bothers rebelling in any way, outside of one joke that it cracks about it. Yep. Um, you know, uh, the movie, by the way, was Interstellar. Yep. Okay. Nice. Oh, God, yes! So, yeah, apparently... You know, Tar Tars but... never rebels against them at all. He only makes one joke about, ah, I will now steal you all for my magic robot colony. <laughs> Is anybody 
Well, hold on a second. Hold yeah. on a second. Uh, apparently, Misty wants uh, clips of when she is laughing her ass off in the background. I don't know if the uh, Twitch that's, chat clipped that. Hi. Hi. Hello. Does yeah. Fe okay, good. Phoenix. Phoenix. We get it. I. Yeah. Okay. He. He already gets it. <clears throat> okay. I will say that probably my favorite depiction of an AI is from a movie that was supposed to be a trilogy, and I, it's never going to happen. And that's Chappie. Chappie. Oh, is that Chappie. the? Is that the movie where the robot like has emotions and is like yeah. he feels missing? Yeah. Yes. Rise of Chappie. the Planet of the Androids. Chappie's great. <laughs> Because cha all like Chappie's didn't that movie great? Didn't that movie get like a bunch of negative reviews? It got a bunch of negative reviews, but as like with a bunch of things, it has become a cult classic, and it was intended to be, and it did well. It like it did. Two thousand and fifteen. Yes. Yeah, it's like it's part of like this weird trilogy that is like being marketed with uh, District Nine and some other title involving robots or something science fiction related. Yeah, but we're never going to see a, another Chappie movie because the studio, yeah, bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, um, no, it's, it's dumb. It's you know why I think all the negative reviews exist? Hmm. Because of one line in the movie. What? You built me a retarded robot. <laughs> Yikes! Could be. Could some, be. It's like some guy says that in the movie. Because, yeah, I okay, know exactly. So the thing is, like... Oh, God, the frame rate is dipping. Yeah. Jesus. Like, from my understanding, Chappie is a robot with an experimental AI that basically simulates consciousness. Mm -hmm. And much like anything that's simulating consciousness for the first time, it has the disposition of an infant. Yes. Only this infant is in a situation where not only are they capable of using their, you know, heavy metal opposable thumbs, but someone's putting a gun in those opposable thumbs. Yes. Because, like... Uh, I can't. I can't remember what area it is. It's somewhere in Africa, but it's become like hyper militarized, and there's a bunch of like dangerous gangs. So this one company creates like robots that act as basically like police officers and military, like basically a robot PMC, right? Yeah. But this one guy wanted to make an AI that was more beneficial, and decided to test it in like one of these robot frames. But then he gets a, like captured by these three criminals that are like, hey build us a robot so that we can use it to like fucking pay back our debt to this other gang he slipped they didn't know that he slipped the ai inside of it and chappie's like ah come on hit him, hit him hit him hit him hit him hit him oh, damn it dad this guy taught me how to fight <laughs> it's a pretty it's a pretty good movie i will say on the topic of ai i saw this one thought experiment recently ah. kind of like it's like an existential horror type of thing so Think of this, back, like, in the far-off future, we have developed AI. We develop a super, a super <laughs> advanced AI, right? And it's called Basilisk. And we ask it to optimize, like, optimize humanity to its, like, to, to perfection. The thought experiment goes like this. Just hit him! Oh, this is Roko's Basilisk. Roko's Basilisk, yeah. Yeah, the, this, so this is the info hazard where knowing about it puts you in danger of it if you buy its premise. Uh, yep, okay. because Roko's so yeah, this, Basilisk... This thought experiment is considered an info hazard, by the way. Yep, uh, so I'm telling you all of this because I don't take it seriously, but some of you might. Uh, so Roko's Basilisk takes optimized yes. humanity as, uh, like... A foregone good, conclusion. A like, foregone... It's going, it's yeah. gonna happen, and it's gonna happen in your lifetime. Is like two of the is like two of the assumptions you have to make first. Yeah. yeah. So this is gonna happen. It's gonna happen in your lifetime. So Roko's Basilisk is developed. We ask it to optimize, and its interpretation of optimization is it must find and subject to eternal torment God everybody who did not help build it or bring it to conception. Jeez. Hmm. And, well, and the the rationale behind that for those who don't, not to cut you off, but the rationale behind the AI is said to be, oh, I need to optimize humanity in the best way and can uniquely do this as a computer with no bias. Okay, cool. What? And then it concludes that if it concludes that it was the best thing to ever happen for this and the thing that negates the or puts into action, it will view anyone who opposes it as evil for trying to put in a system that doesn't work compared to it. Th that's why it would view Fuck. such people as evil in this fresh in this line of thinking. <clears throat> right, whatever would get it to stop or get yeah. in the way it would see as an enemy. Yeah, yeah. Lead, asshole. In, in essence, 
and the whole like a lot of people have pointed out as stupid but oh, conceptually you can create an ai that can simulate the entirety of human history for every human on the planet faster than you can snap your fingers it is a conceptual possibility so for it to make the judgment and the assumption to like determine who would not bring it to conception or pose a possible threat is not that gotcha. far outside the realm of possibility so like it's kind of tropey you know the ai that you know gains learning and becomes kind of evil but that's because it's not really a trope it's kind of a it's kind of a possibility well the other thing about this if you know about roko's bath it's the idea that you must now be compelled to help bring the ai into existence oh. so it's something that uh the fear of this ai existing will cause you to create the ai for fear of the consequences of it coming into existence and you not doing anything about it yep gotcha it's, it's just it's such an interesting thought experiment to me. Oh yeah, it is. I think it makes a lot of assumptions, but if you go with the line of thinking, it is interesting. Yeah, yeah. it makes it makes a fuck ton of, of assumptions like any fucking thought experiment ever, but it's really an interesting one because it's like people will be like, oh fuck, oh god damn it, oh fuck. And my favorite like, ah, damn it. comparison to it is somebody, I saw somebody like discussing it on a forum and they just commented, this is just religion, but scientific. <laughs> this is just religion, but scientific. Also, be right back. Use that. Okay. And you know, kind of right. <laughs> the fear of possible retribution for not like, <sighs> adhering to a strict, like, dogma of creating AI or not creating AI. You can just sub that out for be good person or hell. Wasn't, like, uh, Stephen Hawking really scared of AI, like... Yeah, like, that was one of the few things he scared for, he was scared of for the future, was AI developing a consciousness. Come here, you... Yeah, and... It's, get, like, it's, get over here, get over here, get over here, get over here, get over here. It's a reasonable fear, because one of the assumptions is, like, Ugh, AI there. is brought up Fucker. in... I don't know how many people here have played Mass, the Mass Effect trilogy, but one of the characters Fuck brings it up, like, very concisely. We as organics do not know why we are here. We can speculate and make assumptions as to what our purpose is, but we do not know. Synthetics, on the other hand, know that we created them, gave them a purpose, and they know that we as organics are flawed. Yeah, so they, I... have, they have their purpose in mind. They don't have to look for the like significance in their actions like we do which is a which is a very i feel like it's a very i don't know kind of like nihilistic take on the whole concept of consciousness and you know fulfillment type of thing that we are like we people we as people carbon-based people monkeys whose hair fell off one day <laughs> i mean yeah. I mean, like, if you have, like, some sort of, like, uplink to it, you could just say the co the consciousness of the AI, hey, what if we don't even need machines, what if we were just bio-machinery? So think about this as a concept with that, and yeah, we all know that there are horrifying ways that this go, but think about how it's on the same spectrum, it can also go brilliantly, too, and the reality will probably be somewhere in the middle. Maybe. Golden mean fallacy aside. Um, <laughs> what if... No, I'm aware of golden mean fallacy, because it's... Like, there's some people who think they're all wise for it, but then they're just like, bro, I can cha I can make you give me the answer that I want by just changing the goalposts. <laughs> yeah. That's how, that's how easy it is to outsmart golden mean fa- Or that's how easy it is to establish a golden mean fallacy. Um, no, uh, what if, like, the systems that link the AI are mechanical, but it's connected to your brain in such a way that the personality of the AI is deeply rooted on the individual level to your conscious experience. It's just so, applied to everyone. So, in other words, we have essentially created a sentient... Well, if, if you want to argue it isn't already sentient, we have given a body to the human... Un, to the interconnected unconsciousness of mankind. So, kind of like this, the remake of the Robocop movie? Well, think about it like this. Um... There's this idea that the bones of the gods are are, um, are just within your just within your unconscious. It would also be in the spirit of mankind to give such a god a body. So it could be that 
design all these machines. It's just us trying to create, a, in other words, a physical vessel for the metaphysical concept of what we would think of as deity. Yeah. Sorry for this. Yeah. No, that. Uh, but the, but also imagine like, what if this god is just like, think about like America, the AI. Let's just take America alone, but I'll, every other country that you can think of because it fits just as well. There's like this super conscious AI that is effectively America, and part of it is like maybe like quantum computers to boost it, maybe a satellite array. Ah, Jesus! But it's also linked up to the brain so that it actually has to take human suffering into account because you are effectively a one of its more important processors. That kind of reminds me of the AI program from Sword Art Online, Yui. Yes. That's like actually that. a very apt. Yeah. What the he hell? Was, like, created or to like um, check te uh, the psychological Ow! effect on players and stuff in within the game before people were stuck in the game and then started dying and shit. Forced into a death game, depression. Kind of like yeah. makes it sound like when you do when you're playing Sim City. Yeah. And I still you think that'd be. All of that. I still think that it would be kind of cool to just invoke sort of like an old gods type of feeling where effectively the AI running your country is a weird half organic, half mechanical super entity, and you are also technically a fragment of it. We've essentially that's... literally recreated the occult ah, concept. Shit, of, shit, shit, shit. Come on, come on. That's actually kind of the. That's basically the synthesis ending from Mass Effect 3. Yeah. Oh, no. Why did you remind me of that? <laughs> Just the hyper advanced every, AI. Every single, every single ending of Mass Effect 3 was the same, except they had a different color. That was it. No, okay, no, there are small. Di okay, the differences. Um, are actually. In lore. Um, like, actually. No, no, I'm not gonna defend it, but I am gonna say the differences are only significant in as much as the slideshow and the lore implications, but like, in a manner of substance, it's just a different color. So you are right there. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's just like, do you want the green ending? Do you want the green ending? Do you want the blue ending? Wait, well, it doesn't the matter because the red ending except, is the real one. Skeleton thingies fall out from the sky in the red ending. The other ending, they just explode. Like, what's the fucking point of that? Well, the red ending is the right one. The red ending yeah. is the real one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The one that the next Mass Effect is falling on from because Andromeda was a mistake. Wait, wait, so they made it so the Renegade ending was the canon ending? Yes, kill all the Reapers and also- So this is the ending that is canon. Uh, after giving the Geth, like, full individual, like, individualized, self-realized, like, consciousness and sentience, Shepard then elected to kill every synthetic thing in the Milky Way galaxy. That includes the Geth, a population in the millions, or no, the billions! He just so, killed all of them! So if one of the endings is canon and the other one are made up, what's the point in having the other endings? Yes. Because, well, I wanted to yeah. piss off its fans by making a third game tailored to new fans. Like, who fucking That's does that? This oh is yeah, I want to get into the series. Better start in the third installment. Oh yeah, that's what they said. E like BioWare straight up said in their marketing, Mass Effect Three is a perfect place to s like jump into the Mass Effect story. Uh, like, excuse. Yeah. Okay. I want to start. I want to start this new franchise. We'll play the third. Oh game. Jesus Ooh. Christ! Who are any of these Who are any of Fuck! These characters? I don't know. You have to play the first game. Then why did you tell me to play the third one? I don't know. Okay. Marketing. Nothing you do in the first two games matters in the third game. All right, so I'm about to do something incredibly stupid. Okay, so I... appar okay, you're apparently now fighting against Father, uh, the Father from the Demon in the Flask from Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> yes. I'm fighting a giant looking ball. What were you saying? Ow! Then? I was a bit. God, this ball. I've <laughs> never played Mass Effect. I've only heard about the infamous ending, but the fact they literally said Mass Effect. Mass Effect 3 is the perfect is the perfect is the perfect game to, to start at. I have to add this as a rebuttal. <laughs> yeah, that so was pretty much I, everybody. Nothing, the only like, nothing thing like starting off the trilogy at the third fucking game. Like yeah, Fallout. that does. The like Fallout is the one exception. There may be some exceptions to the rule, but Fallout is the only game where I'm just like, oh yeah, I'd start on the third one if anywhere. Yeah. And, and Far Cry. 
Far Cry, yeah, that's another good one. For that. I I will only give like... the only experience that I have with Mass Effect is that I played the first one, and I'm one of the very few people who would say this. I hated it. Yeah. The first, yeah, okay. I will concede that the first game, like now, is like Todd doo doo, but that's why the Legendary Edition exists because they completely fixed Mass Effect. Well, the oh, other thing is, is that like there are things that the uh, like the game expects me to do, like certain missions or certain weapons to equip with other people. Not to mention, I had to spend like God knows how long understanding like twenty different kinds of race, like the Asari and the Krogan and everything. At one point, I was supposed to save a series of uh, hostages, and I uh, had some kind of stun grenade. I thought it was automatically equipped, only to find out it wasn't, and I killed those people. And there was a news reporter that made me feel like shit. And yeah, I was like, I don't want to play this game anymore. You can punch her in the second game. My brother actually did... Hold on, hold on. My brother actually did select that option to make me feel better, but the damage was done. I don't like games that make me feel like dog shit. And yes, I know about Spec Ops The Line. Kalisa oh, Bin Tijin oh, Al Jalani is right now, um, a fucking bitch. In the legendary one, though, um, in the legendary edition, do they just what change it to basically be the second and third games combat system, or second and third they... second and third games combat system? They revamped the leveling up system. Uh, a couple of missions have been like switched around, and I believe they got rid of the uh, the like uh, renegade or paragon requirements to make like choose certain dialogue options for certain missions. Because, okay, the, the... So it the... now plays, like, two and three. Yes. Okay, good. That's actually my one criticism, because I I hated the weapon overheat mechanic, because it oh felt like God. it was, like, especially in the beginning, it was like, okay, I fired two shots from my shotgun, better wait 15 seconds for me to fire it again. They do still keep the weapon overheat in the first game, because it's actually a lore thing. Oh. How many oh. times are they going to repeat the same frames over and over again? Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> it's an N64 Sorry. game, what were you expecting? Effort? Can, I just, can I just say, it was a really ballsy move to like re-release all three games at once and not fix the garbage ending. Okay, li listen bro, do you want to know fucking the pain I experienced? I buy all Mass Effect games plus the, the DLC to get all the story shit right. Cut to me like a month later finding out that the Legendary Edition is coming out. Um, Ew. Wait, are all the DLCs included? Yes, the Legendary Edition is the complete package minus Pinnacle Station for the first game.